Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out Modern Warfare. So we're going to do the Modern Warfare multiplayer review today. And I'm going to start working on the story and campaign review, which will have spoilers. So I figured I would just separate it up into two different videos. So that way if you don't want to be have the game spoiled, you can just come watch this video and learn about the multiplayer. And then you can watch that video if you've already played or you don't intend to buy the game. So, first off, Modern Warfare is a Call of Duty game, and it's, first off, yes, named Modern Warfare, yes, there was a game called Modern Warfare, it was very popular and a very amazing game that came out a couple years ago. So, as you can see, it's definitely not that game, and it's also not the remastered version of that game. See, see, this is why you should not name your game the same thing, it does not work. So, we are going to be checking out the, I guess now, third Modern Warfare, if you're counting the remastered as one. So, anyway, this game is definitely a breath of fresh air when you come from games such as any of the, well, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, both of them. If you come from those two games, if you come from Black Ops 4, which I hated worse then that's probably my most hated Call of Duty game is Black Ops 4 just because of how laggy it was like the gameplay wasn't as bad and I tried to cover the game but every other game I found something good about I could find something to brag about I couldn't find anything about that for Black Ops 4 so anyway stepping away from all that trash let's step to a game that I think is truly one of the best Call of Duty games and will be for a long time so, that's a pretty bold statement, because you've got the original Modern Warfare, you've got all these amazing games, I remember I really grew a lot closer to Call of Duty and all of that kind of world when the Black Ops series came out and like Modern Warfare 2-ish. Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2 is where I really remember my childhood of playing this game. So, that is definitely... A big thing for me to say that I think this game is as good as them. Now there are some problems with it, but we'll get that to get to that in a minute. So first off, what do I think about the overall? I think that they finally innovated. That's the best way I can put it. I think they under they finally thought about okay, what makes us Call of Duty? What do we need to keep? What do we need to throw away? What innovations did not work? What innovations did work in the last couple years? Because the last couple years have been a mixture of innovation and not so much innovation. So first off, let's talk about gunplay. And gunplay is amazing. I mean, all the guns feel weighty. Everything is, feels intentional. It doesn't just feel like, oh yeah, well I'm, you know, maybe loading a mag into a gun and it's just like a pass away thing. The very, even the animations are weighty and they feel like they're actually something. You're actually, you have to pull out that mag, load another one. And I mean, it's just, that feels weighty. It feels powerful. It feels good and useful. So, that's something I do enjoy. I just think the animations and the feeling of all the animations of the, especially another thing is the, just like mounting on stuff makes the gun feel more, but even recoil. Really cool all that just really makes the guns animations it makes the gun feel kind of real in a sense not like a lot of games where it's just boomstick so definitely for the feeling of the gunplay I do like it there's a medium time to kill yeah you know headshots make it really fast obviously but that hasn't changed but the gunplay does feel good aiming and stuff feels really good but I will say this is my first Call of Duty that I've played exclusively on PC I have not played on console so I am a little biased because I haven't played this on the Xbox or PlayStation so I can't really be as you know of a fa I can't be as fair of a judge as somebody who's played it on different consoles but it does feel amazing so that's definitely something I do want to say for it is it does have really good it just has really good feeling and aiming and everything feels it doesn't feel like you're just spinning around randomly but it also doesn't feel like you're 
like moving like a tortoise. So that is definitely very good and I do enjoy how the gunplay feels in this game as far as movement. Now the weapons in general, I am very much proud of how they laid out the customization and how they made guns. For one, yes there are going to be unbalanced guns, but they are very much, I mean they have some weight, they have some power, but they're all decently, yes there's overpowered guns, but there's not just some gun, like yes there are guns that I'm going to say aren't as good as the others, but I can't say that I've found a gun yet that I find completely unviable. There's at least one play style that you can use and get kills with every gun. And I can't say that for every Call of Duty. I have seen games where there are guns that are so pointless to exist. So, yeah. I have to, I mean, this game has very few unbadly balanced guns and it has no useless guns in my opinion. So, the guns are well made. Now let's talk about customization. Because that's probably the biggest thing they did as far as this. They changed customization a lot. They made your customizations a lot more weighty than just an attachment. What I like is how they even did the caliber changes. Like, if you are doing, if you're shooting a, well, for like pistols, if you're shooting a 9mm bullet, you're going to have less recoil, but less impact and less killing potential or damage. Which is true to real life. I mean, 9mm is a less recoil cartridge, but it does not have as much punching power as something like a 45 ACP. So I like how they kind of added that into the game to where, you know, attachments and caliber changes and things like that, for somebody like me who really is into guns and knows a lot about them, that's really cool for me to see that they took the time and somebody with the intelligence to understand how the guns work, how they do, and what you need to do to work on them. So, I do definitely enjoy how they made, you know, you can customize a gun to where it's your own gun. I mean, if I want a sniper rifle that's good at long range, punching a hard hitting shot, but I can't really run up close with it, I can do that. Or if I want to have a pistol that's good for, you know, kind of more, a little further range shots, well I might put a 9mm bullet in there so I don't have as much recoil and can make follow up shots faster. If I want to have a close-up stopping power pistol, I can put it on 40. I can get it calibered into 45 ACP. I think that is a great way to make only. Well, I mean, there's still a lot of guns, but only a handful of guns, and turn it into endless possibilities. Now, yes, there's not endless, but I'm not. I'm not one of those people who really has the time nor want to to do like mathematics to figure out the exact number of gun customizations. Now I can do that if y'all really want me to, but we're going to have to get a lot of support for me to do something like that. So anyway, I just have to say for the gunplay, it's really good. Nothing I can say against it. Sniping feels, sniping feels amazing and since I love sniping, that's a relief from Black Ops 4 where I hated sniping. I couldn't stand it. I never I sniped for a little bit with the pallet and that's it. I was going I was like so set to get gold camo and do that for some snipers because I've really never grinded that much on a Call of Duty game. I grinded a little bit on World War II, but I actually got those games grinding. But past that I didn't really grind. So that was the first game that I sat down within the first weeks and grind and grind and grind and grind it which felt good. Now you also see that sniper shot right there. Just because I say I like sniping doesn't mean I'm above spamming. So I definitely do like that everything feels good. You know all the gunplay feels good. I don't feel like there are guns that just are completely useless. Like crap I'm getting kills with a Dragonoff. The Dragonoff sucks in most games but it's actually useful. So yeah I ain't complaining. So, as far as gunplay, top marks, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Now let's talk about maps. Maps. Another great thing. Maps impress me for one main reason. They're more varied than I have seen them be in a long time. 
So I'm just sitting here like, hey, yeah, let's go on and I'm going to check it out. And then I decide to start looking at the map layouts while I'm in a screen. There's so many different layouts. And yes, there are still some of the characteristics of, you know, three lanes and all that. But that char those characteristics aren't as noticeable. Like, there are maps that are larger. I don't know the names of these maps yet. And I actually might come back to doing the map review on the channel. If you remember that from, crap, probably about a year ago. I can't believe it's been that long. So anyway... I'm probably going to go back to doing map reviews and more things with Call of Duty now that the series has really shown me that it's something, for lack of better terms, something that's worth my time. Because Call of Duty was not worth most people's time in the Black Ops 4 days. I know some a lot of people did talk well, talk good about that game. I couldn't stand it. And I, it's, it's a personal thing. I just don't, I never liked that game and do not think it was worth time. I mean, I spent a, I would go on, play some zombies with my friends. That's about it. So, anyway, let's get on to stop going on rants about Black Ops 4. I'm trying my best, I promise. And go back to praising this game. Because that's going to be most of this video. Now, I love how the maps are varied. And I also love how... They did small things, like you can open and close doors, which seems so small in the grand scheme of things, but it's really not, because for an observant person, that can make the difference between a, you know, great game, that can be between a nuke and a UAV, maybe a good kill streak getting ended, because if you notice, hey, this door was closed a second ago, now it's open, somebody had to go through there. And stuff like that, those small details, and also, if you know somebody's chasing you and there's only one doorway to go through, close it. Or if you know he's got to come through that one doorway, maybe put down something or hide behind the door so when he opens it, spray it down. I think small details like that is a great thing. I think how they made it is good. Like, I can open up doors and do. That's awesome. And I also like how they weren't afraid to change the size of maps. Now you might say, well, you know, yeah, there was shipment and stuff like that in World War II. Yes, there was, and I love shipment. But I feel like they made larger maps, but they laid out the larger maps to where they weren't just, hey, let's go run for a mile and get killed. Like, um, yeah, Stonehenge, that's my, that's my main memory is Stonehenge being like that. So... If you remember games like that where, you know, you'd run and run and run and run and then just die. There are larger maps that make, you know, somebody like me who loves sniping and especially stuff like Battlefield games. It's still very rewarding for me to snipe in a game like this because, yes, I can go up and quick scope and do and that's fun. But there's still enough distance that I'm getting an advantage over a guy with an AR at longer range, you know there's still an advantage for me sitting back with a scope taking my time aiming and taking one shot and taking him out instead of him just spraying at me so that is definitely a good thing they've made the maps to where they're varied enough that we really do see advantages with different play styles it's not just like it is sometimes with well you play an AR play AR or SMG that's it maybe if you're feeling a little spicy play shotgun that's like your choice that's your choices that was our choices and it's sad and it makes me sad that you know that was our only options so that was one big thing that kind of got on me was I felt the maps made more guns and more play styles useful and it didn't just have to be like well sit at a medium range maybe put a magnified scope on an AR aim for the head and you're good that that was it but now, you know, you can get up close and try and sneak through little hidden pathways with a shotgun, sneak up behind somebody and get them. Or if you want to be a sniper and look, you know, get up there and find an alleyway and take out some people. Or if you want to be a more aggressive sniper, you can, you know, get up in the action and shoot and do. You're always, you can find a way for your playstyle to be useful on almost every map. And I say almost every map because I'm not quite sure I've played them all. Because we didn't just get... A handful of maps we didn't get you know some 
like egregious number, but we still have enough that I can feel like I'm not playing the same two maps every time, same two or three maps every game, which is awesome. I love that feeling of I'm not playing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So, the maps are well laid out. The gunplay is good. Now, another thing is, let's talk about kill streaks. One of the big things that Call of Duty is one of the... It, I mean, Call of Duty is kind of the f one big game that has kill streaks. Now, yes, Battlefield's kind of introducing them with, like, the squad call-ins and stuff, but, I mean, if you think about kill streaks, the first thing that's going to come to mind is Call of Duty. So, let's talk about them. They went back to something that is, I don't know. For me, some people loved it when they went to score streaks, but me, I've always preferred kill streaks because for somebody like me, I may take the time to get a couple kills, but I may not be the one playing super objectively, and I play a lot more team deathmatch. So I love going back to kill streaks, and plus, it just it makes me a little nostalgic going back to kill streaks and doing. I mean, it just feels a little nostalgic going back to that from score streaks where you know if somebody was couldn't get a single kill but could go capture an objective, hide, capture it, and do a little bit of stuff just to farm points, it could get stuff and hey, that's fine, but for me personally I just really do enjoy kill streaks. Also, kill streaks feel weighty and I like that. I feel like most of your kill streaks are gonna be able to make in none of them no, some of them can be kinda of overpowered, but you have to get high enough up to get it. But I like how the feeling of my kill streaks are weighty, but I have to use them correctly for them to be devastating. There's even a little bit of skill to using a kill streak, like as you see right now, the laser designated strike. I don't use it because it's very hard to find a place where I'm saying, okay, yeah, I need fire right now, right here. But that's a good thing to me. I think that, yes, yeah, some of the larger strikes, like the ones that take 10, 15 kills without dying, should require you to, should be able to, like, yeah, just kind of go in and wreck the map, because you've already wrecked them getting 15 kills without dying. I mean, I don't care if you're camping, that's still quite a couple kills. You still have to beat people who know you're camping and are going to attempt to kill you. So, I definitely do like how even kill streaks have an era of skill around them. And the kill streaks are good. I mean, there's not just a bunch of pointless kill streaks like games like Call of Duty Ghosts, as I've referenced before, have. And that's a good thing. I mean, I'm definitely enjoying, I enjoy the fact that I don't feel like I have to play for these three different kill streaks, and that's it. Like, that's all I'm getting out of it. Now, the final thing I want to mention for kill streaks is the 25 kill streak we all know and love, the nuke. The nuke has been a little soiled over the years. Some games have done it well. Some games have done it okay. But most everybody remembers the original nukes. And I mean, you know, just coming in, decimating the map, ending the game. That's awesome. Modern Warfare 2, that's awesome. And it's back. So if you want to go and try and get 25 kills and end a game, you can do it. And I love that so much. Because to me, that symbolizes something more than just, you know, just a kill streak coming back or trying to return to form. That symbolizes a mindset of it's more important to, it's more important to be a good player and teach people to want to be a better player than to try and you know, participation award everybody. I mean, it's that's what this game has been doing. I mean, Death Streaks, all that, has kind of been like participation awards. It's like, oh yeah, you're playing, good job. Here's something that's giveaway. No. I want to see I want to see more of this in games. I want to see more of that Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make you work for it, but once you work for it, it's so rewarding that you don't really care if it's a little hard. It's something that makes you feel willing to fight for it and makes you feel willing that, you know what, even if I have to grind, even if I suck right now, even if my KD is negative somehow, 
Even my KD is a negative one. I don't care. Actually, with negative one, never mind. Let's just say I have a point one KD. What am I going to do? You're going to want to work for it because they're really good things that you're getting out of that. So, I think it's a great thing for them to say, let's make it to where good players are rewarded, better players, worse players are punished, and people have an incentive to get better. They have an incentive to say, yeah, I really want to get better at this game. You know, I want to be the one dropping the nukes. We don't all have to be even. We don't all have to be equal people with the complete same mindsets and ideas. We can be different. Some people can be better at a game. Some people can be worse. And I'm also proud of this little sniping, dude, sniping setup. So, anyway. I just feel like this game, if you are looking for a return to form kind of for Call of Duty multiplayer, check out this game. You will not be disappointed. It is a great game, and I do intend to do cover more of this on the channel. I also intend to be covering out covering Red Dead Redemption when it comes on to PC. I love the game. I just kind of stepped off of console, so it made it very hard for me to be covering it on the YouTube. So, guys. Hope you have a great day and be subscribed and be waiting for the multiplayer, not multiplayer, campaign review because I do intend to do that. But I didn't want to do that until I finished and uh, it's going to take a little longer because it's going to be a very in-depth video. So I hope you have a great day. Please like and subscribe and goodbye.